All right, let's um, bring the pallet in. First, you have to send the uh, first pallet out. And I have to go over here, switch to the other pallet. Push the finish button and cycle start. Bring the uh, tombstone with the vice fixture and the block of aluminum in. Now, because the um, the block is six inches thick and the part finishes to five inches, I want to take um, half of that material off the face, the front face here, which is going to, let me position the B axis here. Just going to be this face because I, I want to take an even amount of material off of both sides of the, of the, um, of the stock just to minimize any kind of stress that from the manufacturing of the plate that could be in the faces of the, of the material here. So the first part of this program is just to face a half an inch off. And then I got to send the pallet out and flip the part around and bring it back. And then we're going to face another half an inch, a little bit less than that. So we're going to leave the part about 50 thousandths thicker than uh, five inches and then um, rough in the radius. And I'll show you after I face the front here, how flat the part is. I'll hold something that's straight across here and you'll see. And then after we uh, face the second side and rough in the radius, I'll, I'll show you how much the part warps. It, it, it bows the whole plate this way in line with the radius. So let me start the program for that uh, first roughing side. Deeper this a little bit. Make sure we don't cut ourselves on something. It's 
this around. Good to deeper this, even though it's just a rough up area right now. I'll just lay the square on here. You can see how flat it is right now. It's at least as straight as this square is straight. Yeah, and I can't rock it at all really on here. So this is face flat right now. Now we're gonna flip it around. We took a half an inch off the face here. And I gotta, I gotta get it out of the vise here. Now this is a little bit of a cumbersome setup here. Let me bring you in closer here so you can kind of see. I want to make sure that it's setting on the device. I don't know if you can see that. The jaws there and these uh, the steps in these uh, bottom pieces I made in the previous video. Now you see it's up tight against there. I see there's really no gap here. Now I'll show you this after I machine this side and you'll see what I mean as far as the way the part warps. The pallet has to be uh, the pallet has to be in this position to go in. Now, finished cycle start. That'll send the pallet into the machine. All right, now we're ready to go with the second side. Thank <laughs> you. 
All right, the machining on this operation is done. I've got to clean this out a little bit. I turned the chip conveyor off. You can see there's still some shavings in here. I've got to clean up. Let me run the part back over here as far as the, so we can see it here. So that's the radius roughed out. You can see it if I point the camera down like that. Blow these shavings off of here. But before we, I uh, turn the conveyor back on, it's already filled up this drum back here. It'll be overflowing if I, I shook it down a little bit. That's, if I can pull that out. Put that under the chip conveyor. Pretty much fills up about uh, one and a half drums on this smaller radius. The bigger ones will fill up about two drums of shavings just to rough this out. Sweep some of these shavings into the chip augers. This is mostly the trouble you have with machining. This stuff is clean, it, clean out the machine and keep it from loading up with shavings in there. When I had the pallet pool, we used to run some of these parts unattended. And, uh, oop, wrong way. And um, it would fill the whole inside of the machine up with shavings. <laughs> Kind of a pain on the on the other. Well, I had two two Hitachi Sikis back then with a pallet pool, 24 station pallet pool. And because this is a pretty straightforward machining operations, well, it used to do it a little different, like I said in the previous video. But but anyway, to machine this aluminum without any trouble, so. We would oftentimes do that at nighttime. Oh, I keep hitting the camera, sorry, with the broom's handle. Okay. 
Now, got most of that cleaned out. I'm gonna run the part out. We can look at the, I'll, I'll hold that, that um, square against the back side of it and you'll see how much it, it um, changed. As far as the flatness goes, I'll show you how it's setting up against the vice uh, jaws and everything. So it was important the order of operations here. I, you notice I cut the radius before I finished the width because I want the widths to be parallel, the sides, if you will, the long sides. And, uh, and if I machine them first, then I cut the radius, they wouldn't be parallel to each other anymore. Let me get the air hose. Now you may be able to see this already. See how there's this gap here? I can stick my fingernail in it. And right here, between the, the jaw and the face of the part because it's, it's bowed the part. And, and these, it's not sitting tight, tight. You see, I can stick my fingernail in there. So the part did move. But like I said, I allowed stock on it when it cut this radius here and it, it shrinks together, apparently, you know, like a, like it kind of shrinks together this way. So let me, um, let me deburr this a little bit and then I can take it out of the vise on the crane and then I can, I can lay this square. Remember you saw it laid flat against there before I started. Pretty good burrs there. All of these edges are gonna be, except for these faces, which are finished now. Like I said before, I had to do that after. That's important for this particular setup to do that after I cut this radius. Now these faces are all gonna be refaced and the radius is gonna be recut, but I think removing all this material now, everything will stay pretty much straight now from now on. Take out these birds. Nothing's critical about this deburr work yet because about 50,000 stocks still has to come off of all these, all the faces except the two sides that are finished. And a eighth of an inch, it's about a quarter of an inch too long this way too, or maybe a little more than that. It's kind of roughly deeper this. This is hard to deeper because of the step. Now I was, the machine could have taken deeper depths of cuts, roughing this radius out, but I didn't, I wanted it to be closer to the radius. So I only took, uh, I wanted the profile to match the radius a little bit closer. It can't get to the bottom. I have to do this as a ball end mill when I finish it. But if I took, you know, deep depths of cut, there'd be big steps in here. So I took an eighth of an inch depth per pass to rough the radius in. That seems to be pretty good. It, it, it gets the radius profile pretty close. And there's, uh, there's still 50,000 stock to come off here, eighth of an inch on each end. And the parts, 50,000 is too thick right now. So this warp, warpage in the back, I guess you could say. Will be uh, faced off at the finish cuts, but I, 
I do that like I always have done it, and it's gonna be laying down horizontal to do that, and we're gonna be clamping it on these faces in the vise that are already finished. So let me get my uh, crane and my C-clamps. Get it out of here and then check the flatness or, you know, just kind of eyeball where it went to. When I finish this, these faces, I tap some holes in the ends of the finished part so I don't have to lift it up with these clamps. After that, I can put lifting eyes in the tapped holes after that. So I don't mar up the finish with these clamps. All right, you get the crane. Maybe I can move you back a little further here so you can kind of see what's happening better. Right. Now, I'm going to set it down on the pallet here just so we can, uh, I mean on the steps, excuse me, so we can, I can kind of get you in closer here and I can show you the, with the straight edge against the back of the part, how much it warped. I don't know if you can see that or not. Pushing the the square all the way up against one side it's it's off about I don't know 30 or 40 thousand I can rock it now like that see if you can see that or not on the video it's kind of hard to It's definitely out of flat, probably a good 30 or 40 thousandths out of flat right now. So, like I say, I'm going to reface this. The next operation, I cut the ends to length, they cut the part to length. It's laying, it's going to be laying horizontal at that point and face that face and put two holes of counter bores or, or big chamfers actually on that face and tap holes on the ends for lifting eyes. And then I turn it around and I'm going to finish this face, these faces, and the radius like I've always done. But I believe it or not, in the past, I've, I've never had trouble with this warping like this on this plate. And this plate has a lot more stress in it, so I had to change the operations like I explained on the first video on this setup. 